give you guys everything that is going on in the world of movies and TV. And guys, I didn't think it was gonna happen again before the end of this year, but I did it! I actually made it back to theaters somehow! And of course, what better movie to watch to mark my return to the theaters than of course, the one movie that a certain director would not shut up about, the fact that we needed to watch it in theaters, regardless of the fact that there was a pandemic going on. I'm of course talking about the one and only Christopher Nolan's 11th official movie, Tenet. <laughs> Now, there was a lot of buzz going in about this movie, to say the least. What was it about? How were they going to bend time? Why were they bending time? All of a bunch of crazy stuff involving one of the things that Nolan absolutely loves to put in every single one of his movies, playing around with time. And now that I've finally seen it, what I can officially say off the bat is that this is without a doubt Nolan's most fast-paced, daring and intense movie that he's put forward yet. The action and spectacle in this movie are shot in a way that I haven't seen done really in any of Nolan's previous movies. He once again proves that he is a master of all things technical with some of the most grandiose special effects and he puts it all in service of finally getting to do his dream that he's been wanting to do since he first started making movies, making the biggest, most expensive sci-fi James Bond movie yet. Because as it turns out, he wasn't lying when he said that this was a spy movie. That's literally what it is. It just happens to involve time travel or time inversion, I think is what they specifically call it in this movie. But yeah, this is a movie that for all of its fun, all of its action spectacle involved, the story is without a doubt no one's least original yet. And no one is a guy who's always been criticized for the types of stories that he puts to use in his movie. Because the problem is that if you take away all the giant concepts that he's put in every one of his movies since The Dark Knight, the, the story is the one that you've seen before. Heist movie, Hero's Epic Return, space travel movie. The more and more I think about it, I think the only truly original movie that he's done since The Dark Knight is Dunkirk. Now don't get me wrong, for all of the giant fans of this, these types of movies, you're gonna absolutely love this. It's got all the high stakes, it's got all the exotic locations, all the expensive looking stuff. And again, I cannot state this enough, the action and the technicals, just the filmmaking in general. If you are a fan of how films are made, you will love this movie. Just from a technical standpoint, I was amazed how different of a film this felt than all of Nolan's previous big spectacle movies. He returns once again with cinematographer Hoyt Van Hoytema, who shot his last two movies. But the difference here is that rather than going for that big, grandiose, expensive look with these long, lingering shots that really serve to show off the scenery, he instead opts to take the expensive look, and this movie is very expensive for just from the looks of it, and instead apply almost his old school signature filmmaking approach of having it be a series of quick close-ups, which if anything just intensifies the action and the stakes that are involved. Like I said, this is a very intense, brutal movie and it feels much different than, pre than all of Nolan's previous movies. And the score, oh my God. Ludwig Göransson does the score here and no offense to the score that he did for Creed, Black Panther, and The Mandalorian, but this easily tops all of them. I'm gonna go on the record here and say that this score to me is the new version of Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross the score that they did for The Social Network. I'm gonna be that bold. And as for the acting, the performances were fine. Every actor in there did what he needed to do and I very much enjoyed seeing John David Washington and Robert Pattinson bounce off each other. They had a really good dynamic. And as far as how the James Bond-isms go, I think there was one point where it became a little bit too obvious and on the nose and that's with the Kenneth Branagh character as the oh-so-obvious James Bond villain. He's so over the top and I like Kenneth Branagh as an actor for the most part. And there were some moments in there where I was just straight up laughing but not in a good way because I feel like with that character, Nolan was trying to do almost like a self aware type of a Bond villain, almost like what Matthew Vaughn did with Samuel L. Jackson in the first Kingsman movie. But either Nolan or Brana or some combination of the two is just not smart enough to really be able to pull that type of a villain off and make him as believable. And he just get left with a really confusing mess, albeit with some funny lines for it. But the reason why I bring up the James Bond spy comparison is because there is a reason to me why those movies have their diehard fan base and they're very easily accessible, but at least for the most part, I see that that's a genre that usually doesn't have a lot of shifts and changes in it. There's a reason why James Bond has been pretty much doing the same thing for the last 50 years. And for me at least, while I didn't hate this movie by any stretch of the imagination, there was still something left to be desired as far as the actual story goes. Because if you take the time inversion out of it, this movie is as predictable as it gets. You know exactly what John David Washington is gonna do, you know exactly how the relationship with Elizabeth Debicki's character is gonna go. You can almost predict beat for beat the twist with Robert Pattinson's character. And the last act, well, 
unbelievable to witness as far as what he achieves on a technical level. Could not be more of your straight shooter video game approach, getting through the multiple levels in order to get to the thing, to stop the bomb, to save the world, a plot that you've seen a million and a half times over. And well, again, that's not necessarily a flaw with the movie itself. I'm more so attributing that to, the, to my overall problem with these types of movies. It still, to me, does do a disservice, especially given that this is a Nolan movie. And I know that the story has never exactly been the strongest point of Nolan's movies, at least for every movie after The Dark Knight. But for me, at least, the difference between this movie and his last four is at the very least with his last four, I was able to get something new out of each and every one of them. And they were still at least able to surprise and intrigue me. And this movie did that on a technical level, but not really on an emotional level. And granted, all that stuff that I just said is probably going to mean absolutely nothing to most people watching. And if you want to go out to the movies just to have a good fun time and just to, you know, be able to celebrate going out to the movies again after having been locked in your house for the last five months, I absolutely encourage you to go see this movie. Obviously in, in the safest way possible. And while I still stand by my statement that Nolan has never made a bad movie, this is still only, yet again, another four-star movie. Which again, is a good rating. It was a very good movie. I very, very much enjoyed it. But there was just that little piece that was missing in order to make it great. That was it. That was my official review for Tenet. Guys, let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. And also be sure, if you haven't already, to check out my Christopher Nolan ranked video. Let me know how this movie ranked with all the rest of the Nolan movies that have come out. And as always, be sure to click the like button, the subscribe button click the little bell next to the subscribe button that way you get notified every time we have a new video follow us on facebook and instagram at talking tv no g as always people watch more fucking movies